Hello, the internet Saffron here, going back into Black Set Under the Skin. Uh, and it looks like we're going to be replaying this part with the Bulldog. Because <laughs> I never really know where, th where it's going to save. To his notebook, Dunn had seen Craig but that's okay, because maybe then we can just do something a little different here and see what happens. Hi, buddy. Get out of here, pussy. Piss off! Let's let's do the Mary route. I'm sorry about what happened to Mary. You're sorry? I'm the one who's sorry. You know what it's like to run this place alone. He only had one waitress? Beat it. it might have been easier to slap the information out of him. Okay, so it's it's the same thing. Universal truth. Everyone is guilty of something. You don't know who I am, right? Don't know and don't care. So I suppose I can do either way. We did the public health inspector. Let's do the consumer protection office. Why not? The consumer protection office. Oh yeah, right. So it's ba basically the same path. Have to be firm, you know. Have you eaten? Dinner's on the house. Of course it is. Only if you don't treat me like the rest of your clients. Maybe we take this conversation inside. You have far too many complaints. Will you cooperate? Sure, go ahead. Your call. Always at your disposal, Inspector. Ask away. So either way, you're getting questions. Soft and made him talk. Sure enough, Dunn had been there a few Yeah, so it doesn't matter what you say there. It's pushing you to the same result, which is, I mean, I guess. Apparently, the guy still lived with his father. Dunn said he couldn't stay there a day more. For the time being, he would move into... You know, that's the one thing about a lot of these games. You know, they give you all these choices and stuff, but most of the time in the end, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so it's pretty much just the same path as a health inspector. Uh, I died of food poisoning. Nothing I fooled you. Let's do the nothing I fooled you. Absolutely nothing. But you were easy to fool. Especially considering uh, he tried to run you over. And then you apologize and he was a jackass about it. So there. And again, left him speechless. Well, that's what happened last time, so. So, so far the choices have been you follow the story or you're dead. <laughs> For the most part. And I wonder if there are multiple endings besides, you know, losing. Don had taken Spano to his place. I wanted to believe it. But I guess that explains why there was the side baseball glove in Dud's apartment because it was from Spano. All right, so now here we are at the deductions. So we have... Okay, if Spano was an orphan, how was he living with his father? That kind of doesn't make sense, does it? Was is it his adoptive father? Did he find his real father? What the heck is going on there? And why are we at a cemetery? Poor neighborhoods. So do the dead. Oh. Well, I'm glad the city has been updated. <laughs> In the mid century, Greenwood became the resting place to the city's most distinguished. They released some new characters. I don't know if it's paid DLC or not. I don't really care. I haven't played it in a long time. Writers, inventors, artists, businessmen, politicians, police officers, thieves, pimps, and murderers. Ow! Mind the spikes. Here lie the bodies of the soulless minds that raised New York from the ground up. Okay. Now you know where to go to become somebody in the Big Apple. Why didn't he just lockpick it? I mean, we had those lockpicks. We did it. We've used them, what, twice? Which is unfortunate because actually, that's actually uh, neat how they implemented it. As a little mini game, but you... And maybe you use them more times. I don't know if there's other locations that mayhaps I've missed. All right, so here we are in the cemetery. I'm assuming there's clues around some of these gravestones. 
Or sports cards. I bet they're sports cards. Because that's where you keep them in a cemetery. They're just kicking around. Yep, like there. Hey, look, there's a sports card. Gilmero Casada looks like an otter. Can I get past this? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, maybe not. Can't walk through those flowers. They're too thick. It's too much of a barrier. I can't push them aside. I bet, I was going to say, I bet that's another sports ball. Let's see what other sports ball cards I can find. Just keep looking around until the little button prompt comes up. How about here in this puddle? Is that a puddle? Whoop, hold on. Is the gravestone here? That was kind of hidden. Anything? No? Okay. But yeah, what it, this looks kind of like mud. Look at that. Ooh, it's a pretty moon. It's kind of flat. Like you can kind of see where, where the angle is in the background. Like that's the edge of the room <laughs> that they use for this. Oh, that looks like somebody important. We're not going to go there yet. We got to find all the sports ball cards. And I'm assuming because we found the one piece, the piece of the one, the one piece here that the other pieces, wait a minute, what's that? That looks like something. We'll get that in a second here too. All right, so it looks like we've done a complete walk around. We'll go investigate a little American flag. Oh, hold on. Jenny Boots, wife to Harry Badrick. Okay. And then we have Memoriam, Henry Badrick, father of baseball. Oh, that was, okay, yep. That was with that book we saw. Oh. According to the book I found at Dunn's place, fans of the sport leave baseballs on Bradrick's tomb to pay their respects. Oh, okay. I, oh, so I can go around here. <laughs> hey, I like a sports ball card. Say, so I can look around here because I'm like, I don't see it any. Be better with a skull between the bats. That'd be creepy. <laughs> okay, I thought there was something else over here because it looked like there was two spots where I could hit X. Mm, apparently that's done. Okay. Whoop, oh, hold on. Wait. The four bases guarding their father. Oh, I see. I was going to say, it's kind of rude to be walking all over these headstones, but they're bases for baseball. That's the one with the big orange, the big orange ball and the stripes. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, that looks like... Tomahachi. Tomach? Tombach? Say that kind of looks like a Rottweiler. Like our young Mr. Yale. All right. Well, then we're going to go to what looks like the obvious spot over here where there's a gun, I think. What is that? If this had been here over 30 minutes, it'd be covered in ants. So it's sardines? Is it a sardine can? Yeah, and there's some more food here. So he's living in the cemetery Still hot. with his father. Aha. Interesting. Okay. So yeah. So whoever it was heard us coming. I want to say probably float. If he's a chimpanzee, I imagine he probably ran up this tree or climbed up the tree. But there doesn't seem to be like any access or anything for it. Just, okay, it looks like no, it's just this area. Yeah, so the food's there, and it looks like it, it leads up that tree, but I can't, 
I can't interact with that tree and I don't know if I'm supposed to be able to or not. Hello? I know you're up in that tree. Yeah, and the thing that then the, the fireflies here too, that's kind of an interesting little effect. So what do I do now? Did I look at this headstone? Oh I did not. A Celtic cross. Suppose Celtic? The ring keeps the devil at bay by reflecting the sunlight. Really handy at this time of the day. Ah. There's a baseball down here. Okay. So now I have a baseball. Does it just tell me the same thing? Okay, yeah, it does. Nothing else of interest. All right, so then I throw the baseball in the tree? Or do I leave it here? Now, okay, I don't leave it there, apparently. Yeah, because it seems like where these fireflies are, it's like, okay, this is where you're supposed to go. But whoopie doodle, I have a baseball. So I've got a baseball, what do I do with it? Wait, wait. I've never trusted angels. When they fall, They turn into demons. We already said this. They turn into demons. Hooray! Oh, oh, okay. I knew somebody was up in that tree. <laughs> Dropped something. Is that a chopstick? Yeah, right there. Chimpanzee up in a tree. Come on. Come on, give it to me. Here we go. All makes sense now. Kind of. So he lights up a cigarette. <laughs> oh, and his lighter works now. Very good. So what's he going to do? Going to start talking about sports ball? The monkey actually do it? If he did, why? Oh, and he's got the glove too. Oh! Unless you don't start throwing it at the headstone, that's like rude. I've always been a Warriors fan. Found this baseball glove. Well, I don't know that's gonna matter, but we'll do the appeal. I've always been a New York Warriors fan. Although to be honest, they're not what they used to be. Yep, they just haven't been the same without Craig Spanner. We'll try to appeal to him. Oh. I should have figured there's no time limit so I could just do everything. I'm investigating a case of sports corruption. I think a considerable amount of athletes are involved, both current celebrities and former stars. Yeah, so we're just going to do all of them because apparently it doesn't matter. Someone at the diner close to his gym. Then he took that person to his house so that he didn't have to live at the cemetery. We're just reassessing everything. Aha. Uh -huh. Interesting. Okay, how does that translate to give me the glove? He wants a cigarette too. Jeez. Ask nicely, why don't ya? They're the absolute worst.
So he just lights up another one. Well, okay, here we go. Thank you. Hi. Who are you? Uh, we'll be honest with him. I don't think the answer would have mattered either way. How's Joe? One question at a time. It's my turn. Okay. So he doesn't know Jun is dead? Why are you hiding here? Why did you meet with Dunn? Why did you meet with Joe Dunn? Because he was looking for me. He came here one morning, but I was uh, too embarrassed to come down. Because he left a baseball with his initials on, on by the tombstone. Sam's Diner, tomorrow, 12.30 a.m. They open 24-7? They want to kill me. What did he want from you? Who wants, Who to, wants kill you? to kill you? One question at a time. That's true. Now I got to answer one of his. How's Joe? What would happen if I told him the truth? Would he lose it? Could I take that chance? Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to be honest with him. Joe Dunn is dead. Murdered. I told you, Joe. How did it happen? Uh, one question at a time. Quid pro quo. My turn. Okay. So, what was your glove doing? What did he want from you? Why are you hiding here? Why did you meet with Dunn? See what Dunn wanted. Because we know why he's hiding there. He wanted to know who was playing dirty in the sporting business. Dirtier than usual, that is. Wrecked lives, careers, ruined at the top of the game. He wanted to know if the same had happened to me. He wanted to know if the end of my career and my disappearance. Aha, uh -huh. because that's what you're saying too, that uh, O'Leary had all that information the guy who about killed. Helen Moore and that he rigged. Surgeon. Oh, shh. The surgeon, so is that that doctor? Okay. Leary's life, Dunn must have punched O'Leary's souls. Personality, a smudge. Spanel blames everything on the surgeon. And then of course, Mitchell. Is Mitchell the surgeon? Is he the person behind all of this? But if that's the case, why didn't he, I don't know. My turn. Yep, dig it. But why though? I want to know why I should trust you. Well, I've been honest so far. Could have killed you because I never lie because I take my job seriously. Do it for our friend Don. Because I take. I can't say I never lie because that's not the truth. It's my turn. That's Strike one. Nice. Is he in this photo I got here? Ow! Hey! hey. Dang it! Hey, that toss was. And then he took off. Damn it! Hopefully, I got what I needed. Both my ear and my self-esteem would hurt for days. But at least I had a new lead to follow. The surgeon. Like lead after lead after lead. It's like as a crazy. But now, all of my senses were on guard. No matter how good the disguise or how well he hid, I would find And I wonder though too, because like I said, I've been talking about different endings. And I wonder if you had chased a different character, if it would just lead to that. Like if there's red herrings planted throughout this game. Because I can chase, like, if I had gone a different direction and chased O'Leary. So what you're saying is... Would it still have been the right one? corruption scandal involving all kinds of athletes. Two, our puppet master is a surgeon named Mitchell, a man who happened to fight in the war with Dunn, right? 
Uh, it might be a false lead. But it could be no more than a false lead. Anyway, where was I? Number three, right? Three, since Dunn was on his trail, Mitchell or whomever hired an anteater to get rid of him. Okay, yeah. Can never be too sure, though. Since you were also shaking the wasp's nest, he went after you. But the anteater made a mistake, and Mitchell or whomever killed him to cover his own tracks. And, wait, four. The key to all this lies with a common friend of Dunn's and Mitchell's, Craig Spenow. Do you really trust him? I don't trust anyone. You should know that I don't trust anyone. Except for your friend Weekly. <laughs> four. No, I mean, five. Dunn was murdered five, I mean, four days after taking Spenow to his house. If that doesn't make him suspect, makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, I don't know what to say there. I'm just going to leave it. Left you speechless, didn't I? I have that effect on people. Let's follow up with the suspects. You told Smirnoff that even though you're sure Yale is innocent, you think he's hiding something. Yes. But what about O'Leary? Um, what about O'Leary? I don't think, like I said, I don't think O'Leary has anything to do with it because he has just as much to lose. Let's think. Yeah, because, yeah, he he takes care of his own business, but somebody ordered Randall to murder. O'Leary wouldn't have sent so. him done. He would have dragged him to his basement, given him his little speech, and then killed him himself. Yeah, exactly. And I still have one more no, thing. I know O'Leary, and he wouldn't have sent a hitman. He would have taken matters into his own hands. What about Cassidy? Seven, right? Okay, so Cassidy. What do I have for Cassidy? To one of the Olympic Five. Dunn's murder had to be carefully planned out or his wife. Cassidy acts recklessly on impulse. And then the murder was carefully planned. I think so it's safe to rule out Cassidy as Dunn's murderer. He seems too impulsive to have planned such a twisted crime. Yeah. Whoever planned the whole thing knew the suicide theory would fall through. So he manipulated the clues to incriminate Yale. Cassidy is too impulsive to pull off such an intricate plan. So even if you have your doubts, Mitchell is the one pulling the strings. And you know why? Why? Because in novels, the murderer is always someone the detective knows from the beginning. Well, that's in novels, Weekly. That could be the case in British novels. You know, where everyone in the mansion where the murder took place is a suspect. But this might just be an American whodunit. <laughs> Where the detective doesn't even meet the comic Which is kind of funny because, like I mentioned before, the comic is published in Europe, but it takes place in America. How did it go with Helen Moore? Uh, I didn't get anything. Yeah, I don't, I don't think she was. I asked to interview her along with her boyfriend, Al Stone. Since I'm a big shot, they were happy to oblige. Perfect. Oh, now, I was going to say a little. I'll go back and forth so you don't get bored. So, who goes first? Uh, we'll ask Helen. Here's one for Helen. Okay, do you ever feel the boxing? The rumors about O'Leary true? How much did champions pay you? Here, let's do this. We won't go straight into it, make him automatically aren't suspicious. Aren't you afraid that those blows to the head will take a toll on his intellectual capacity? Honey. Take a look at my man, and then look at yourself. You really think I'm with him because of his intellectual <laughs> capacity? Oh, nice. She's not shallow at all. Nothing will change my man. His smarts, manliness, and integrity are all boxing proof. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, about Al. Here's a question for Al. Jealous about sharing your sweetheart. What do you think about needing a manager to compete? Um, how about the fight against Yale? In just 12 days, the contender will try to steal your belt. Any thoughts on your fight against I said, I don't want to go right into it and yeah, spook sure. him. My Al is going to kick that thug's behind. Isn't that so, honey? 
Yeah, well, we'll see. No such thing as a weak rival. No oh, sense. that's good. You are and will be world champion. Next question. Okay. Uh, we'll go back to Helen. Okay, Helen. Uh, we'll do it. I don't care about the champions what thing, although I think I probably should have done it. That claim you were in a relationship with Desmond O'Leary. Oh, honey. <laughs> It would be such a shame to mention that shady character in your article, wouldn't it? Why? I'm sure your newspaper would hate to fire someone as talented as you. Is that a threat? <laughs> uh, okay. Now what? Okay, we'll take Al again. So Taking turns. The manager. Your manager is Frank Cassidy, president of the Boxing Managers Association of New York. According to him... Only boxers working with member managers should be allowed to compete. What do you think about that? Uh. We never talk politics, honey. Athletes should steer. Well, they're helpful. And stay focused on their sport. <clears throat> don't you think? Yeah, that's right. More in politics. Okay, one more question. And. Uh oh. Who is this? Al, honey, can you answer it? I've got to go say hi to a fan. <laughs> a fan, right, huh? Mr. Pulitzer. Uh, <laughs> wait. Shh. You mean she stopped smiling when that fan showed up? Uh, yeah. Yeah, who was it? For me? I'll be able to show you something as soon as I'm done developing these pictures. And actually, I thought it was odd, too. So while I continue to interview Stone... I managed to take some pictures of Moore and whoever her mysterious fan was. <gasps> wow. And let's find out who that mysterious fan is next time. I'll have to end the episode here. Uh, Cause yeah, I, I guess, you know, it should be a hundred percent certain and everything does seem to be pointing to Mitchell, but they still have Spano and Spano kind of took off on that, but he was worried about being killed too. So clearly like, clearly our main suspect is Spano. Now, like they did mention, it could again be a red herring, and maybe Sonia is behind it all after all. I don't think she is, but I guess we'll have to just wait and see. But then I guess I gotta end the episode here. So, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you liked it, ring that bell, subscribe, comments, all that other stuff. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all later.